Hi guys, time for another plus 100 video for a sideshow, which seems strange because I just did the sideshow Kanataurus revisit 5 videos ago. But when I first did those reviews, the Kanataurus was already an older statue I managed to get only long after it came out. And soon after, I got the Triceratops. And in those days, for various reasons, my videos were few and far between. Still, it gives me an excuse to take this to the table for an up-close and personal look again. This is the Sideshow Triceratops statue, released fairly recently in 2015. And since everyone already knows so much about Triceratops, I hardly need to give much background info like I usually do, and we can fully focus on this statue. And there's a lot to focus on. The first thing you'll notice is, compared to the previous T-Rex vs Triceratops diorama, as well as the Sideshow Carnotaurus, this thing is massive. And both of those actually fit into two cubicles on my bookshelf. No way this one will. In terms of length, it's about 51 centimeters or 20 inches, just like the Carnotaurus. But in terms of volume and weight, now this is 6 kilograms, which is about 13.2 pounds, and it just wouldn't be safe. An estimated adult length of 8 to 9 meters, 26.3 to 30 feet, makes this 1 to 16 to 1 to 18 scale. Now, larger scales like this provide a bigger canvas for sculpting detail and paint tabs, and there's plenty to see here. Now, superficially, Triceratops might seem hard to place because of the combination of a short frill but also long brow horns. But various analyses have concluded it belongs to the Chasmosauric group of Ceratopsians, even though it lacks the characteristic long, fenestrated frills. The name Triceratops means three horn face, so these signatures are marvelously rendered. The nose horn is small, as it should be, but it has character. There's this jagged bifid appearance here that might be a defect, a congenital anomaly, or the healing of an injury that immediately gives it an individuality apart from a generic template Triceratops. And you can see the little grooves at the bottom. And of course, the colour application. The impressive brow horns are equally well treated. Now in terms of detail, you can see how it almost erupts from the skin. There are cracks and grooves in the keratin at the base. Then it smooths out as we head to the terminal points. Again, I love the colour fade from the dark to the light and then to the dark again. Now notice these discontinuities down here. Which together with a lacquer-like sheen really gives them a very organic look. This kind of detail and coloration is also seen in the beak. Now you see here the keratinous covering over both the rostral and the dentary. Just such, such beautiful attention to detail. Then we have the other important feature of the head, the frill. In many Ceratopsians, the large fenestrations that must have been covered with relatively thin skin make them near useless as a shield. And I say near useless because 
just like the argument I made with the uh, Stegosaurus plates in my PNSO review, the simple fact that they were in the way of more vital areas do already lend some protective utility. Now, Triceratops, however, has a solid frill which might actually have a more solid use in defense. Now, that's not to say a device can't have multiple uses. And another idea with widespread acceptance is the use as a sexual display. Now, that idea is expressed here in a splash of orange on the frill. And you can just see the nice blends. Um, I do think it could be more garish still, but I'm happy with the shades of orange, the dark browns. And then looking here, uh, you can't miss the fantastic detailing here. The scales of the skin. In these ornamental osteoderms, which I believe are speculative. Now what is in speculative is the ring of epoxipitals here. Now each one has its own individual shape, size and texture, and even color variation. And completing the picture, you have of course the face, and again, more facial scalation. And just look at how the colour blends in. As a bonus, I like how the eyes have this nice gold colour with a black pupil. And actually, come to think of it, it reminds me of a certain character. Now, not to look a gift horse in the mouth, but I wish there would have been teeth sculpted in. Now, we saw that in the T-Rex vs Triceratops diorama, and that was a smaller Triceratops than this statue. So it certainly could have been done, and would have been a nice bonus. Moving on to the body, the interface is the neck, and this thickly muscled structure can believably support the weight of this massive head. As you'd expect, there's a delightful amount of sculpted detail, with differently shaped and sized scales. Natural looking skin folds and creases, and even a dewlap which is a nice touch of speculation borrowing from extant animals today. There are also bumps throughout the body that may represent very raised feature scales or scutes. Though if you're used to a much smoother appearance, this might actually make you feel uncomfortable to look at, especially if you have trypophobia, and most people have it to some degree. I should mention that skin specimens have indeed been found for Triceratops, and perhaps the most well-known is the Lane specimen. It's clear Triceratops had larger scales than other dinosaurs, like the hadrosaurs or theropods. Hexagonal tubercles were interspersed with larger tubercles, which had central conical projections, which could have been smaller spikes or even the origins of filaments, as you'll see in some reconstructions, because early ceratopsians like Cetacosaurus seem to have had them on the tail. Now, Dr. Mark Witten suggests this is unlikely, as hair doesn't go through scales in modern animals, but around them. This statue seems to agree, so no quills. Weirdly enough, as far as I know, no paper has been published on the Lane specimen yet. But if any one of you knows otherwise, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to read that paper. 
In some areas, the size and density of these bumps seem to almost become body armor. And you see that down the back of the wrist here. Down the sides. Lining the ilium. The back of the thigh. But these are quite sporadic still. But on the back, to the hip, down the tail. They are more densely and organized, and as such, they remind me of Skeletosaurus armor. In contrast to the head, the body is a dark drab olive color, with some mottling and stripes of black crisscrossed throughout. They fade rather nicely into the body in general. With some stripes faded into the tail here. Now each of these scutes are also painted very nicely. And the ones in the wrist and hamstrings are also differentiated from the rest. All in all, I'm quite happy with the coloration, except that life is good, but it can be better. And when you compare this to the prototype images, you do see quite a fall off in complexity. Now the thickness of the arm the forearm and wrist are pleasingly convincing as being fully capable of not just support but maneuvering of this massive animal. And so too are the feet, though they might be a tad oversized. Are these limbs lend weight? pun intended, to the impression of mass and thickness of this very robust and heavy animal, as do the way the toes are splayed out here, uh, pushing up the mud on the base, and create an illusion of weight and ponderosity, though hinting at the frightening power if this animal decided to accelerate towards you. Now one gripe is the manus. The weight-bearing digits really are just 1 to 3, uh, which are hooved, and digits 4 and 5 should be vestigial and clawless. In fact, digit 5 has only one phalanx. And yet here, every digit is fully developed, weight-bearing, and with a claw. Otherwise, it's really easy to get lost in admiration for the detail, the rough texture of the skin, and the hooves. Um, ju just look at this one here in the foot, for example, with this split um, looking like a healed injury. Always impresses me to look at it. Such detail. Now, the, the, the posture itself is, I would say, quite close to the general consensus, uh, with a wider distance between the fore than the hind limbs, and neither fully erect nor sprawling, and it looks like something has caught its attention, putting it on alert. Now the baby, which is the extra that comes with the exclusive edition. It's darker than the prototype images. Now here you can see it's an already dark animal, but at least with obvious flashes of color, orange and ochres. Now in hand, unless you're under bright lighting, much of that detail is lost under normal conditions you'd display this in. And not just that, but in several areas, it's just in one colour, which is quite lazy and swallows up detail instead of expressing the possibilities. 
which is a pity because, as I hope you can see, there's a fair bit of sculpted detail. Now I'm not too sure about this very flexed posture of the spine, it does look a little unnatural to me. And perhaps the intention is to create a, some kind of a cringing in response to the same something the mother is on the alert for. So it's kind of shrinking back on itself. The general proportions of the head seem to follow more or less um, skulls that I've seen. Again, really, to be honest, there's nothing special about this uh, to write home about. Finally, we have the base. And sadly, there's not much to say about it. It's about as functional as you can get uh, with the choice of a simple mud flat. And uh, you can just see for yourself how, how unimpressive this is. And I do have one big complaint, uh, which is this extremely unnecessary layer. Not only does it add weight to the shelf and shipping cost, it makes the whole thing extremely unwieldy. It also raises the overall height, so when you have limited vertical space, it becomes a real limitation. What you do that for those unnecessary! Uh, there are also these caps that cover the holes where the baby would have been in the regular edition. Although either I'm an idiot or uh, it looks like no real effort was made to make them more fitting. So that's it for the Sideshow Triceratops and Baby. It's really quite a privilege to own one of these because of the craftsmanship that went into them. Now Sideshow was my first exposure to higher end models and they still stand up very well in my collection. Now one reason I had uh, for this plus 100 idea was to do better justice to some of these incredible models because back then my lighting was deplorable but I also realised that many younger collectors may not have heard of this wonderful line and I'd like to raise awareness of this. Who knows, if enough people express an interest, Sideshow may resurrect this line. But I'm not holding my breath though, and I'm hoping PNSO will have some large hollow figures like their incredible Ceratosaurus and Huanghe Titan to recreate the feeling, though not the weight and certainly not the cost of these remarkable statues. That'll do it for me. I'll see you guys in the next review.